So we want to build better airplanes as Japan. That's a noble yet masochistic goal. Maximizing your impact with this country can be difficult, as the game forces you to spin a lot of plates from the very beginning. First, you go through the Spanish Civil War. Then you have the war in China. Then you try to conquer Asia while island hopping and fighting the allies at land and sea. And all of this is happening while you're trying to build and mobilize your economy, stay on top of research, and go through an infuriating focus tree. Wow. All of these factors make it tough to prioritize your air force, but now my rant is finished, so let me try to help you out. You start the game with 718 planes, most of which are useless. I would advise you to try and sell most of them on the international market if you can, and use the IC to build up your economy. Still, when the Spanish Civil War kicks in, you will be able to send two air wings as volunteers, so keep all of your key one tag bombers and around 150 cast to grind some air XP. Also, you can stop producing these airplanes and put the 1-2 mills that are freed up on the production of Key 1. Make sure to research range improvements in the first half of 36, because when you grind 8 air XP, you're going to be turning your all tactical bombers into this abomination by adding bomb locks, quad LMGs, putting newer dual engines, and substituting the defense turret with extra range. This has to be the worst quote unquote meta plane ever designed, but it will get the job done in China. Unless you're facing a try hard human opponent, you won't have have more than a hundred fighters up against you and they won't have the air detection and range to do that much damage to you. This is why you can do close air support with these planes and if they get engaged by some crappy fighters they can inflict damage with their machine guns. Honestly I would just keep using this model until you're done with China. You can get better range and stats by researching the 36 medium airframe, but it's not worth it as it has higher aluminum costs, which will likely force you to trade factories and again, you won't be facing a capable air force in China. Now what about 1940 planes? You really have a lot of options as Japan and it all comes down to how you level up your Mayos. You have Mitsubishi and Aichi, which are some of the best airplane Mayos in the game, but the trouble is you can't level them up from the start, as each is a separate 70-day focus, which is also locked behind two other 70-day focuses. Now, you can't choose to prioritize these and then get the zero focus, as it will allow you to fully level up the Mayos and produce 1940 airplanes as early as February of 1937. Now, that's super powerful, but should you do it? Probably not, as if you do, this means that you'll delay the war in China or your economic mobilization, which will kind of derail your other goals in the game. On the other hand, if you don't get these Mayos quickly, it means that you won't get to level them up early, so you will likely have to choose one over the other, or you will have to fight the allies with both of them halfway leveled up. In either case, it's one of those hard decisions that everyone playing Japan faces, and I can't really help you make the right one. What I can do, however, is share my Meta 1940 designs and wish you good luck. Starting with 1940 light aircraft. I recommend that you build all of your light aircraft on carrier airframes. Why? Because the Japanese have this unique decision that makes carrier-based aircraft 20% cheaper. Carrier airframes are slightly more expensive than the regular ones, but with this buff, you're actually getting a nice 15-ish percent discount to any light aircraft aircraft you build. In terms of fighters, this is what you should be putting on your carriers. Quad heavy MGs up top, a single engine 3, and armor plus self-sealing fuel tanks at the bottom. You will have the rubber to spare for self-sealing fuel tanks when you demand Indochina, and even more rubber if you attack the East Indies successfully. Still, if you're struggling for rubber for whatever reason, you can always swap the tanks for another armor plate. This fighter has bad range, but range does not really matter when you're doing carrier missions at all. Ideally, you would build these with a fully leveled up Mitsubishi, but if not, the other two miles will do just fine. As for the carrier naval bomber, we're using this super cheap and efficient model. Single torpedo up top plus a massive 28.7 air defense, which will make it super hard to take down by enemy fighters. Sure, air defense doesn't work against ground or shipped base AA, so you can make it even cheaper by removing these three if you want. However, you only pay an extra 
1.8 IC per plane to get this massive protection against enemy fighters, so I think the insurance is worth it. You want to build carrier naval bombers on the Yokosuka Mio. There's also the option of switching the torpedo for triple armor piercing bomb blocks, but for me, this is more than pointless. Three AP bomb blocks only give you one more naval attack, and they have much worse naval targeting. Plus, they remove the option of doing the port strike mission altogether, and they waste so much you can't stack air defense at the bottom. Not to mention, they need to be researched separately. Now, these are your carrier planes done. What about ground-based planes. One thing you could do is go the light aircraft path, which has the benefit of producing super cheap planes. The downside is that you'll be sacrificing sorely needed range for that, which you kind of can mitigate if you use Aichi, because it still gives a 45% bonus to range for small aircraft. Also, you can use your older carriers as floating air bases when you control plus H them somewhere, so you can have a mobile, albeit small, airport supporting your naval invasions and ground troops. This is the light fighter I like for air power projection. Same weapons and engine as before, but you put two extra fuel tanks to increase the range. The air defense is sacrificed for range here, but it's still a decent fighter. You can use either Mitsubishi or Aichi as Mio, it depends on which one you've leveled up. The other light model I like is a nav cast hybrid. You can do port and naval strikes with it, and you have those two light bomb locks for close air support missions. I have three range modules down here and I'm using Yokosuka as the Mio, but Aichi is also a good choice if you have it leveled up. Enough about light aircraft. If you want to maximize your range so you can fight effectively in the Pacific and Asia, medium planes are the way to go. The best medium fighter I can come up with is this one. Quad heavy MGs up top, dual engine threes, self-sealing fuel tanks, and extra fuel tanks. This gives you super high air attack, decent air defense, and an otherworldly range of 2400k when you combine it all with Aichi. You can use this fighter from ground-based airfields in Asia to completely cover places like the Philippines, the East Indies, and so on. To make a long story short, it's a great one and you should build it. As for bombers, I really like this tactical slash naval hybrid, which is an improved version of the light one I showed you earlier. This thing has incredible range, decent ground attack, and it can also do naval and port strikes effectively. The only downside is that it's expensive and you will lose a lot of them when you do naval bombing. So that's why I didn't put self-sealing fuel tanks here. They would be okay to put if you're facing a lot of enemy fighters and you're not short on rubber, but keep in mind that it won't save you from the AA of ships or divisions. Finally, we have the ace in the sleeve of Japan, kamikaze strikes. How do you do them? Well, you need to complete both of these focuses here. The second one unlocks a special bomb module that you can put on your airplanes. You unlock the module by researching guided missile 1, which is a rather late 1944 tech. Then you need to design a proper airplane and this is the one I've gone for. Fixed explosive charge up top, a full stack of extra range modules because you don't really need other stats, and an engine too because it's cheaper and still works for kamikaze missions. You get an impressive 1900 kilometer range when you use the Aichi Mio and the last thing you need to do is to ensure that you find enemy ships to bomb. You can build radar stations and you can also have your naval bombers on the naval patrol mission to find enemy ships. Kamikaze strikes are really expensive and they're not easy to research, but they do a ton of damage. Their use is situational. If you're in late game and you're still slugging it out against the allies, you can definitely go for this tech to turn the tide in the naval war. Just make sure to have your naval battles in range of kamikazes as otherwise they simply don't work. Before we wrap up, let's quickly cover air doctrines for Japan, and if you're enjoying the video, please like it and consider subscribing. I really like strategic destruction for Japan, not because you're going to do much strat bombing, but because it gives the highest naval mission efficiency modifier out of the three doctrines and gives you a plus 30 bonus to air superiority, which is the bonus that decreases the defense and the speed of enemy divisions when you achieve air superiority with your fighters. This will make it easier for you to do naval invasions and fight toe-to-toe -to -toe 
battle with enemy fighters. Plus, it makes your naval bombers more effective. On the other hand, you can't go wrong with operational integrity as it gives the best combat stats for fighters and some nice bonuses for tactical bombers. And now that you know everything about the Japanese air meta, why don't you check out my other two videos for Italy and Germany? Thanks for watching, partner. Balkan Cowboy signing out.